Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1. In this video I present the 2 Engine Engine Mouse, a recovery system for two RS-25 engines, as you can see in the back here. I had previously made a 3 Engine Engine Mouse, which was basically the back end of the shuttle with a nose on it, but that wasn't very aerodynamic. And, uh, well, I mean, it could have acted like a pod, but it didn't get really get recovered in the best possible way. Parachutes would have been necessary. I would really like a version that actually glides down and lands, which is what we have here in theory. Um, now we can tweak the engines out a bit. I sort of left some room. Obviously, actually, it'd be bad to have that like this because these things will get baked a bit. Uh, well, I mean, they are heat tiles and everything, but still. Um, we probably don't want that to happen necessarily, but um, yeah, we can move them as necessary. Now, taking a look at the center mass and center lift, you think, well, they sure look like they need to be pulled out, right? Um, obviously, if we pull them out, it would move the center of mass back substantially and closer to the center of lift. But, but that's not what FAR is telling me. Uh, so something here is lying. Either FAR is lying or that center of lift marker is lying because as far as FAR is concerned, it's stable like this. And it's unstable when I move the center of mass closer to the center of lift. Uh, let's check that out. Maybe, maybe it's changed its mind since I reloaded the game because I made this and then uh, of course, I've left it be for a few days and coming back to it, let's see, I have to make sure that these are lined up with each other. Um, there, okay, okay. And calculate, well, it's still fine. <laughs> so, maybe you'll be alright, I don't know. Um, well, we could ha try it this way. Let's just see at faster speeds if there's any issue. Okay, I think it's changed its mind. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll, we'll pull them out. I mean, as long as they're protected, that's the uh, important thing. Their heat tolerance is really weak. We need to make sure that they're going to be protected by the body of this. Now, I haven't put any uh, sort of lifting surface thing on the body here. Uh, so neither FAR nor the stock lifting surface module. So it's just FAR calculating based on its shape. And we do have these procedural wing surfaces that uh, will help us and of course procedural control surfaces in the back and that's rather so it's really just this body that I made and there's a whole lot of additional parts to it and we will see how that works out for us eventually here yaw is going to be a problem but it's looking pretty good I'm looking pretty good all right uh, so we'll shift the engines back so that the control surfaces don't get torched and let's turn to the VAB with the intended use for this, which is, of course, SLS. Now, would it be easier to recover the engines of SLS in sort of a pod style, just have the engine module detach and uh, have it be a pod coming back down? Maybe, but then when you think about it, it has a strong tendency to topple the other way because the, of the engine mass. Uh, maybe the heat sheet will keep it fine, but just Putting four engines on that kind of heat shield is pretty tight. So, yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe not, but this seems in a weird way safer, I guess. Unless you have an inflatable heat shield. You're putting less mass on a much greater surface area coming back down. So we'll see. But it depends on whether this these engine mice can really control themselves. So we'll follow one back down and see if that's the case. But here we go, we're launching Orion, and it's a Block 1B SLS, so it's got the heavier upper stage. And that will put leave these in a lower orbit, well, not even an orbit, lower suborbital trajectory, which is a little bit rough. I mean, we would ideally actually like to get these little guys to orbit, and then have them deorbit and come back down. But we'll see how they do on a suborbital trajectory like this first. Okay, so this is what SLS looks like with two engine mice at the bottom. There you go. And this sort of lifter was proposed uh, back in the day with the shuttle program as a heavy lifter. They had thought of the engine mouse thing, they didn't call it that, but I saw diagrams and the paper in which they proposed it. 
and well it didn't happen obviously but it's a possible thing here we go ignition and launch it does add dry mass to the situation there's no doubt about that It is heavier than the regular engine mount by quite a lot. Each engine mouse carries uh, some MMH and NTO for control as well. We could probably reduce that though. Certainly for a suborbital trajectory we could reduce it because it's uh, got enough to deorbit. Probably more than enough to deorbit. All right, and booster set. The camera moves because of the loss of the mass here, and now we have our two little engine mice that actually could get to orbit. Um, we'll see. Seems to have enough delta V down here, if it's telling the truth. These aren't even the RS-25Ds, these are the original RS-25s. <laughs> uh, I should have uh, changed it to D slash E at least. Technically the launch escape system, at least from what I've seen, only goes off after the second stage starts. So we'll keep it. it certainly doesn't make things easier to keep it. We ended up a little bit high. I overdid it, I think. Okay, separation and ignition and explosion of the inner stage. Um, well, we can't really see what's going on here. I That's probably not right. <laughs> but it'll have enough to do its thing. That's fine. Back over here, though. Um, no, let's just, I don't know what that does, but all right. We want one of these guys. Either one will do. Um, RCS on, SAS on. Oh, they're wiggling. Uh, uh, is the RCS active? Oh, uh, ah, RCS enabled. Oh, is it that one that we're using? Okay. Wait, I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> okay, a prograde. We'll see which one turns prograde. Force roll will be good too. Okay, so that one's flying off like that. This one's a little bit smushed up against the external, well, not the external tank, the SLS core stage. Can it so sneak by? I don't know if it can maybe get itself to orbit. I doubt it. These RCS don't look very powerful. This force roll does not seem to be in the right direction, does it? Um, surface... Hmm, I think this whole thing is oriented wrong. I may have to fix that. Um, roll negative 90. Or maybe it'll work and I shouldn't fix it at all, I don't know. Uh, let's lock the gimbling so they don't clip through the bottom of it and get overheated. And they need to be shut down too. Okay, well apparently things are a bit sideways. We're at 16 tons right now. Um, keep going. Uh, let's see, uh, where can we land? Can we make it to Africa? I want to get to like Lagos or something. Or Dakar. That'd be good. 
We need a valid shuttle abort site to recover these at. It seems like it'll do if we get some lift, but I'm not sure. And we're still coming in pretty steeply, so I'm just letting those thrusters run. We may need to up the power, but then they're consuming the fuel pretty quickly. So I don't know if we need to up the th power of the thrusters or not. Oh, we don't have communication. Uh, does that mean we don't have control? Oh, yeah. Pitch is going to be interesting, isn't it? <laughs> um, it's going to be yaw, actually. Well, apparently Smart ASS does not obey the comms, which is fine by me. In this case. No, oh, we're practically to Africa. Well, no, it's still got us sort of crashing into the ocean there. We'll see if we get some lift or not. We are in the atmosphere. Let's take off physical time warp to ensure that there's no other complications. Being sideways might throw off far by quite a lot, but I'm not sure. I mean, we were oriented in this direction in the SPH after all. It seemed to be reading things right. I'll, I, I won't keep the thrusters going, I think. Oh, right, I don't have... Uh, yeah, I can't control the thrusters. Oh, well. They're going, then. But yeah, I would say that the launch out of Cape Canaveral and recover these little guys at the uh, shuttle transatlantic abort site would be about the idea. That would be a good way to go. Okay, this is getting serious now. I want to see my uh, control authority here. Suborbital is always rougher. I mean, um, when you aren't... When, uh, a steep trajectory, I should say, is rougher. All re-entry trajectories are suborbital, but... I don't know what the... Oh, things have blown. Things have blown. Oh, no. It was the canards, right? I guess we don't have enough heat shielding on canards, or was it stress? That's what I want to know. It says overheating, 2,800 out of 2,500 Kelvin. We may need to get this to boost itself to orbit first and come back down a little bit shallower. I think it's just too steep for it. Then again, it's sorta... Sorta working <laughs> at this point? All the procedural control surfaces have ripped off. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, no, sorry. Now they have all. Now it's just the body and the engines. On the bright side, the body is doing a good job of protecting... Oh, well, there they go. <laughs> I was about to say, the body is doing a good job of protecting the engines, though. No, not so much. Okay, yeah, so we need a shallower trajectory if we're going to do this. I probably need to reduce the heat shielding on this. There's not a whole lot of point for it to survive when everything else has failed anyway. But uh, I'll have to restart the game for that part, and so we won't do that yet. Hey, there's some islands that we could have landed at. Uh, but Canary Islands, maybe? Uh, so, yeah. Uh, what we'll do is I'm going to put some one kilonewton thrusters or something like that, and we are going to use those to try to boost this to a full orbit. I don't know if it can. Let's see in the SPH. Oh, I guess we'll test the crashability of this first. This is a grave contention accusations that I make my craft too resilient to crashing, especially in the water. Of course, the thing that I recover off of the water most is the shuttle, which wasn't my creation at all. But yes, this properly gets disposed of in the ocean. All right, to the SBH. Okay, so I have added little uh, two kilonewton thrusters using MMH and NTO, which is what we've got in here. And so maybe they'll be able to help us get to orbit. But if we take a look at the Delta V stats, 478, not with the trajectory we had last time because we were more than... 800 short and 13 minutes is a long time. Maybe I should have more than these, but we'll see um, 
Oh, let's let's go for another set. And uh, yeah, okay, they're little tiny things. Uh, six minutes sounds a little bit better, but we really need to fix the trajectory, upgrade the engines. I'll I'll do that on the model that we have in the VAB that's already attached to the SLS. So anyway, as far as the center mass changing when we drain fuel, uh, it moves a little bit, but not a whole lot. It moves back a little bit. Not good if uh, it crossed the center of lift, but there's no indication of that. We didn't really see instability per se until we like we lost all the control surfaces, so uh, we'll leave it be for now. All right, so let me go to VAB, make the changes, and then we'll launch. Okay, here we go again. Throttle up, SAS on, and ignition. And launch. So I'll try not to go quite as steeply as I did last time. Oh, we should be past max Q here. Okay, three seconds. And off. A good separation. Now the little engine mice did not separate particularly cleanly last time. We may have to work on that. At least the RCS worked. I mean, for a new part, you know, making sure you configured all the things is important. Seems like we have proper RCS ports, though, again, we, we have an odd rotation on the body, but that didn't seem to cause that wasn't the cause of the problems. There were problems, but that wasn't the cause of it. Okay, I accidentally put all the 2 kN thrusters igniting at the same time as the RL-10s. We don't need that. And again, of course, we're testing this in the most difficult situation for these little guys. If it was carrying Block 1, that would be easy, because it's a light tank and this SLS tank would probably get to orbit like that. And maybe those little uh, engine returners would be able to deorbit the tank in a controlled fashion. That would be nice. Instead of uh, maybe using less than all of its fuel or something. Uh, of course, we're carrying the launch escape system all the way as well, which is another burden that uh, wouldn't necessarily be the case. Okay, final part of the burn. We're certainly lower than last time. Plenty of time to apwaps is being generated though. Oh, uh, let's... Oh, okay. Separation. I don't know why that always blows up, but okay. And back over here. We'll have our other business to attend to. Um, well, let's throw all down and... Separate. Okay. Well, we'll probably lose communication again, so we have a limited amount of time here. Um, activate that, RCS. Uh, yeah, that's, that's the way we want to go. Um, is it? Or... Oh, right. Uh, wait. Okay, come on. Not, not the SSMEs. We don't want the SSMEs. I don't know why it sort of gets caught on the model. Okay, prograde. Uh, that's not gonna do very well, is it? All right, fine, fine. Just keep going this way. It's all very awkward. Okay, I think the sound from the RL-10 is gone now. Okay, so positive surface, roll, I think it was 90 or was it negative 90? And let's use the thrusters. Hopefully they're not too imbalanced. After all, I basically had to sight it out to see where to put them. There's a bit of a yaw issue, but that might be just 
Okay, I think it's negative 90. Okay, well, controlled enough. But now our situation is a bit complicated. Um, we don't really want to... We need to land somewhere, <laughs> basically, is, is the rub. We don't want to get to orbit. Because I don't think we have enough to get to orbit and deorbit. That will be too much. I guess we'll just have to see where we end up. We'll set it to a fairly normal periapsis for re-entry of a shuttle-like object. Oh, I can't shut it down. Oh, gosh. Okay, well, I can pull that trick, apparently, in this version. That's unusual. I thought they stopped you from doing that, but okay. Oh, I can shut down engines. Well, that's even easier. And it does say limited probe control. I guess this counts. Okay, so yaw 40. You don't have a huge amount of MMH and NTO left. All right, let's see if this trajectory helps and we'll see where we end up as well. Oh, we don't want to th have the throttle up. Oh, shoot. Okay, uh, um, off for now. Oh, um, fine. We'll wait until we hit the atmosphere. Oh, we've got communication. Okay, that and then the throttle is down. We can reactivate that and get that on. All right. Okay, so we'll encounter the atmosphere over the Indian Ocean, I think. And we want to see control authority now. Okay, we are now at 100 kilometers with no appreciable use of the controls. We're getting very modest lift if you take a look at the vertical speed decreasing. I mean, uh, trending towards zero. Oh, we've got some overheating. I uh, think that's the engine, or maybe it's the one... Oh, it's the one kilonewton thruster, or two kilonewton thruster. I, I must have had it poking out a little bit too much off to the side here. Yeah, we'll have to tuck it in a little bit better. But 70 kilometers, and we're still sort of okay. We're getting lift. As, okay, let me take off the physical time warp. This is dangerous. Oh, God. Okay, that's that's just a little thruster. Okay. Um, the bottom decoupler, which we could certainly get rid of, would be fine. Not a big problem. I guess the two, or I say, should say two kilonewton thruster imbalance is causing a little bit of yaw that's necessary. But overall, still okay. So they're burning off velocity here, which is good. Well, that decoupler sure doesn't want to go away. Uh, our vertical speed is going down, so we're dropping again. Um, the engines are a little bit overheating, which they oughtn't be, because I can't think of anything more properly shielded than they are, but all right, whatever. I did turn gimbling off. Yeah, gimbal is locked. Controls are great. The balance is fine by the look of it. Very, very nominal. Better than the shuttle, oddly enough. I don't know if we're over Australia. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, the long ways off from Australia. This is all Indian Ocean right now. right in the middle of the Indian Ocean. So, we will have to figure out a better place to go. Maybe we shouldn't go quite so well into orbit, I guess. I mean, the overheating is a little bit tenuous here, right? I mean, out of all things, the engines look like they're in trouble. So that's not good. That's the main thing here. So if we go more uh, steeply, in order to, let's say, hit Madagascar or something. That's not great. Go more shallow. We need to have more fuel to get into a fuller orbit, probably. 
then we could make Australia maybe or New Zealand. Actually, by the time you get to Australia, New Zealand, you could possibly just get back to Cape Canaveral or Edwards or something. So yeah, uh, I'll check what kind of volume for fuel we can fit in here. Right now we've got 2,000 liters. Maybe if we can fit more volume in here, we should and get the delta v we need to just complete orbit uh, and then come back down in a much more controlled fashion perhaps to cape canaveral this is looking good though yeah uh, i mean for a second test this is looking pretty good except i really wish the engines weren't threatening to blow up when they shouldn't be exposed to the airstream at all <laughs> i don't know Call me old-fashioned. There is a collider at the bottom of this. This collider all over this thing. I made sure of that. I was well aware that having a collider all over it would be, you know, in the appropriate places would be important to shielding the poor little engines. But, I don't know, maybe I'll have to get gaps somewhere somehow. Very nicely controlled, really. I'm shocked. <laughs> I'm shocked that it works so well. That uh, seems to glide very, very well. Uh, oh, just as I say that, it's starting to... Okay, um, let's. Ha it would need to pitch down here anyway, so that's all right. I don't blame it. Too bad it's in the dark, but I'm proud of this little fellow. Okay, let's get a little bit lower here. Lest we stall out or something. Let me turn SAS off. Ooh, it sort of maxes out like that. Um, let's turn SAS, uh, RCS on again. Hmm, that's weird. Well, these shouldn't be doing pitch, yaw, and roll. Oh, God. Oh, right, yaw is pitch. Oh, gosh. Pitch is roll. Okay, okay, off. Uh, SAS on, please. Right, right, right. That's an important quirk in this situation. Great. Don't panic. Oh, I hope the other control surfaces aren't like only controlling the wrong thing. Uh, yeah, let's just let them do all things. Surprised it got this far like this. Uh, up, come on, get to prograde, get to prograde. We stalled out, so we need to sort of point through the prograde vector, gain speed, and then pull up. Oh, great, limited probe control. I don't know if, am I deflecting the control surfaces now with limited probe control? I don't even know. Well, I mean, uh, no, I don't have, when I try and pull up, it doesn't do anything. Okay. Okay, well, that's not good. Okay, well, things got destroyed, as they should, when plunging into the ocean at 100 meters per second, just for the record. But uh, let's go to the BAB and adjust a few things. So basically, pitch is yaw, and yaw is pitch. But I'll just make sure that everything is able to control all the things, and I'll simplify matters. So these weren't uh, helping out with pitch at all. Okay, so the question is how much fuel can we actually contain in the front end of this? Why do the procedural tanks have a black texture indicating that they, their texture is missing? Okay, and then we have a atlas texture here. That How did I, how did this, when did this change? Plain metal? What the? When did this happen? This wasn't like this the last time. Gosh. Okay, well now we've got metal tricolor. 
metal stripes. The, oh, it's got the recoloring UI. The, the, the oh, procedural parts has the the SSTU tank recoloring thing. Okay, well, uh, we'll have to play around with that some other time. But it's pretty clear we could put more fuel in because uh, this. Let's get MMHM. Yeah, you can see this tank here, small as it is, we can make it thinner. It's got three, nearly, no, it's 2,355 uh, of each. This only has 988 and 1011. So, yeah, we could certainly double or even triple the fuel that the SSME returner is carrying. The downside of that, of course, is that the more fuel we put in, the more burdened the whole launcher is going to be with the extra fuel. Though, if you take a look at it, we're only talking about 2.4 tons of fuel here. So if we double it, that's 4.8 tons each. So 9.6 tons altogether. So I say only, but that's actually quite a lot since we're getting pretty close to orbit with that. So that's all taking out of the payload capacity of SLS. We'll see. Anyway, so this is the two-engine returner system that may work for the RS-25s if we do it properly. Maybe I should tilt them up more. I don't know if that'll help them survive, but anyway, uh, I will work on this a little bit more, but uh, in the future, when I use SLS, I'll use these things. And in principle, they will. Uh, we will imagine that they bring the engines back. That way, I mean, I guess if I have to do a direct replica, nah, no, I'll still use these. <laughs> I mean, I, I'll try and use these, but we might use the SLS system now that I can, in principle, return the engines. So anyway, look forward to that in future videos. And I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.